Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today to begin hearing about Wii U. I am here inside Nintendo headquarters in Kyoto in a seventh floor conference room, which, as you can see, is rather plainly furnished. But there is something here which is quite significant. These are the Japanese character for Dokso. This is a term which has guided Nintendo since the early days of the company when Mr. Hiroshi Yamauchi was president. In English, it means creating something unique. I believe when you hear from Nintendo this week, there may be several times when you say to yourself, well, that certainly is unique. And hopefully, you will be thinking of unique in a good way. In fact, this Nintendo Direct itself represents something unique because it really begins our E3 News announcements even days before our E3 presentation this coming Tuesday. During that event, we'll be focusing almost entirely on games for Wii U. So today, I'd like to introduce you to Nintendo's brand new home console, Wii U, and its new controller in a more conceptual sense. In this room in 2008, we began discussing what we should do with Wii U to meet our goal of creating something unique. And here is one of the topics involved in our discussions. Maybe this seems familiar to you. People are gathered together in the same room with friends or family, but they are not truly connected. They are paying more attention to their devices than to each other. There is an American professor who has written a book about this called Alone Together. And I think that term captures the idea. New technologies in general have made life easier and more efficient. But we have to wonder what this will mean for the nature of human relationships moving forward. So one of the challenges we set for ourselves was creating something that would help unite people rather than divide them, uniting whether in the same room or great distances apart. And this was a tool we devised to help accomplish that. It is a controller for Wii U, and it's called the Wii U Gamepad. Let me tell you how we decided on the name. In the 1980s, we began setting a home console known in Japan as the Famicom, and in America, at the Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES. The controllers for previous game platforms typically had a joystick of some sort, but the NES had only a flat surface with the plus control pad. Because of this, players began referring to it as a game pad. In any case, we decided that this name also made sense to describe the appearance of the Wii U controller, even though it now also features two stick type devices. This is probably the most obvious difference from the prototype we showed at E3 last year. That previous version had circle pads for thumb control but we decided that this format was really more appropriate for portable devices where a low-profile form factor is important. 
Instead, here we have incorporated sticks that not only operate precisely in 360 degrees, but which also can be pushed down for an added method of control. In addition, we have also redesigned the back of the controller and the bottom layout to maximize comfort, even if you are playing for a long period of time. A couple more things. This mark to the left of the screen is the location for the NFC reader writer. You can place cards or figures on this and relevant data will be read or written into your experience. This button can be pressed even when the Wii U itself is not activated. With the existing remote for your current Wii, you can simply turn on or turn off the game console. Beyond that, you need your TVs or cable remote. But with Wii U, the gamepad itself becomes a fully independent infrared TV remote. Next, let me talk about some of the things that the Wii U gamepad makes possible. Last year at E3, we talked about the potential of two screens. Of course, Many people already operate the two screens of the both Nintendo DS and Nintendo 3DS. But with Wii U, two screens become more dynamic because the relationship between them is not fixed. Secondly, the two screens make possible something engineers refer to as asymmetric diversity in gameplay. In simpler terms, what is being seen or even done on the small gamepad screen is different from what's happening on the big screen TV. We'll be showing you what this means for gameplay at E3 this week. The gamepad screen is also a touch screen. You can use a stylus to draw pictures or use your finger for the usual range of intuitive inputs. What is more unusual is how the two screens can work together in unprecedented ways. This kind of gaming feels unique. The Wii U gamepad also senses movement with motion and gyro sensors. This is particularly important for people somewhat unfamiliar with gaming. By using more intuitive motions to control a game, players of all skill levels can better play together. And of course, all this is enhanced because of the improved graphics processing power of the hardware, something you recognized beginning at the E3 presentation on Tuesday. Also, consider that with a screen in your own hands, you don't need to be sitting directly in front of your TV. You might also find yourself in any comfortable spot anywhere in the living room. As we mentioned last year, Sometimes you can continue playing on the gamepad even when the TV screen is being used for something else. This might occur with more casual games when you are in the middle of your Wii Fit routine or when you intend to spend many hours deeply immersed in your game and others aren't willing to let you have the TV to yourself for all that time. And in any of these situations, not only will you see 
high quality console graphics on the big screen TV, but those images can be displayed on the Wii U gamepad without delay, something no existing handheld game devices can do. Wii U will support all your previous forms of Wii control, including the Wii Remote, the Nunchak controller, and the Wii Balance board. For those who are mainly interested in multi-platform games with more traditional means of control, we will also offer the Wii U Pro Controller as a separate peripheral, which is lighter and maybe more attractive for longer, more intense forms of gaming. Overall, some people may wonder if Wii U is a simple evolution of Wii or something entirely different. I think maybe the best answer is both. In 2006, we changed the way friends and family interacted in the living room. One way we thought about this was turning the living room into a kind of playground. And that play could also be expanded to distant locations. While many Wii games were single player, probably the most memorable experiences came when people would play together. Today, Wii U does what we did only better. And at the same time, it is also something entirely new. Not only can it connect people in a better way within the same living room, but it also connects people living room to living room in a much more compelling way. By this point,